it is very ironic that Amherst College, um, of all places, chose um, a musical by Stephen Sondheim to revive its annual musical. And the reason is, is that Sondheim is an alumnus of the class of um, 1950 at Williams. Um, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, this is, it, it's very interesting because, um, you know, Sondheim, uh, even before he went to Williams, he was from the Upper West Side of New York City. Um, he, um, his sort of childhood father, in some ways musical father, um, was Oscar Hammerstein, um, the great lyricist, perhaps, the, one of the greatest lyricists of the first half of the 20th century. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things you see about Sondheim in um, all his, um, um, uh, in all his musicals, but also in terms of who he was in college, um, I've read a little bit about him, um, is that he was a true student of the liberal arts. Um, he went into Williams thinking he was going to major in mathematics. <laughs> um, he then uh, thought he was going to do English. Um, but he called that a fallback major. Um, so then, which is interesting. Um, but then he decided, you know, I think that um, maybe music is the right place to go. And he took a course with Robert Barrow, who was teaching there. Um, and um, one of the things he uh, writes about is how um, being in that introductory music course that he took sort of let him understand more of the art of music, not only sort of the technical qualities of it, but the true sort of art of thinking and composing music. And you know, one of the things I think you see in Sondheim's work, um, and this is one of the things that for me was most important about this panel, is sort of that very close connection between on the one hand what you're trying to articulate through words and through the actual lyrics of the show, and boy are there a lot of lyrics in this show, <laughs> um, and then the musical representations of those ideas. And so um, one of the things Professor Sanborn spoke about is how um, Jack, at the end of um, his number on the giant, is talking about how the giant, they're these big, tall, terrible, awesome, scary giants, and how there's a certain rhythm, almost, of all those adjectives where you just want to get across the adjectival quality of the giant, how you almost can't, with words alone, express exactly what the giant is. Um, as the witch says, the giant is huge. The giant is, it seems to be, more than what can be just expressed with mere words. I think that, you know, one of the things that um, Sondheim embodies in terms of his musical writing is that sort of understanding that we can't just have words alone, that there are other questions, say, about community, say, about artistic expression, that need the words, need the lyrics, need the plot, but extend well beyond it. And that's where you start to see, he, you know, um, hear him doing these fascinating things where he'll take the theme he initially uses for the witch, this sort of really scary theme that he sets on top of these, um, the chords that are known as the psycho chords because he took them right from Bernard Herrmann in um, Alfred Hitchcock's famous film. Um, and he takes that theme and then he turns it into the theme that represents the beans and the beans we think growth. So on the one hand, we have this sort of scary, creepy theme introducing the witch early in the show. And then we have it turning into um, this theme that represents sort of the growth, but possibly the scary growth. I mean, Jack's beanstalk is huge. Um, and so, you know, for me, that, you know, that whole discussion that Mark and Scott and um, Professor Sanborn as well were having um, about that sort of nexus of speech and then the music and um, uh, other aspects of it was very, very important in terms of understanding, I think, why Sondheim and why this show is uniquely suited maybe for a liberal arts college.